In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Join Apostle John Udo today as he teaches the Word that was with God and is now with us for our transformation. Apostle John Udo, worth hearing. God's love. Practicing God's love, part two. And the subtitle for the part two is Loving Your Enemies. Loving Your Enemies. Last week, I started out with a part one of the teaching. And I did tell us a whole lot of things about practicing God's love. And I gave us a list of those that we are to practice love towards. Number one on the list of those we are to practice love towards is the Lord our God. He's the first on the list. The first commandment. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy might and with all thy strength and then the second on the list is yourself love yourself you cannot truly love another if you don't love yourself because it is from what you have that you can give to others and then the third one on the list is your neighbor. Love your neighbor. The Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. So if you don't love yourself, how are you going to love your neighbor? Because you are supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So we first love ourselves and then we are able to take out of it and love our neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself and the fourth on the list is fellow believers loving the brethren the bible says let brotherly love continue the fifth on the list is what we are looking at today loving your enemies hallelujah The topic of loving our enemies is a teaching of Jesus Christ which is worth considering. Especially because loving our enemies is one of the toughest things to do on earth. It's easy to love God because he did everything for us. He loved us. He paid the price for our redemption. We can love our neighbors, especially when they are good neighbors. Of course, we love ourselves. Most of us love ourselves. And then, uh, according to scriptures, we love the brethren because they are our brethren. But then, Jesus began to teach something new something different from what the people had always known which was love your neighbors love those who care for you but hate your enemies and so Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 from verse 43 brought a new dimension Matthew chapter 5 from verse 43. Ye have heard how it hath been said. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemies. That was the Old Testament. That was under the law. Love your neighbor but hate your enemies. 
Back in the Old Testament, it was an eye for an eye. You take my eye, I take your eye. Verse 44. But I say unto you, now this is a new commandment by Jesus Christ that changes everything. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. If there was anything so tough and uh, difficult to obey in scriptures, this is one of them. But thank God it was spoken by Jesus himself. If not, perhaps some theologians will say uh, the disciple did not know what he was saying when he said this. But if you check your Bible, you will see it is written in red letters signifying that Jesus himself said it so Jesus says love so you've heard it said and you might have been living according to that law that you should love your neighbor but hate your enemies but I'm bringing a new order and that new order is even your enemies are to be loved when they curse you bless them do good to those that hate you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. I'll read further in that verse. Jesus says, You have heard it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, Love your neighbors and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your father in heaven hallelujah he causes his son the son belongs to him to rise on the evil and the good and send rain on the righteous and the unrighteous if you love those who love you what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even the pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect hallelujah now look at the context in which perfection is mentioned in scriptures it is mentioned in the context of loving your enemies so God is simply saying if you want to be perfect like your heavenly father is perfect this is the way to do it love your enemies there is a level of perfection that can only by be attained by loving your enemies if you don't practice this principle of loving your enemies you will only wish pray and talk about that level of perfection but you will never be able to attain it because this perfection is associated directly in scriptures with loving your enemies the bible says loving our enemies shows that we are children of our father in heaven so every time we express love towards the undeserving the haters, the enemies, we are behaving like our father. The Bible says our father shines the sun upon the good and upon the evil. He does not say these ones are wicked. Therefore, the sun will not shine on them. The rain will not shine on them. He rather continually floods them with his goodness. 
in the hope that out of the abundance of his goodness towards the evil they will come to repentance realizing that God loves them despite their evil and negative behaviors so anyone who truly wants to look like God and resemble our father is going to go out there and love the enemies the word perfect in Greek in this uh, context of scripture simply means complete so when the Bible says be ye perfect as your heavenly father is perfect he's saying be ye complete as your heavenly father it is complete and it comes from a central word that means to set out for a definite goal the word complete there means to step out to accomplish a definite goal so when Jesus says we should love our enemies he's simply saying that we should make it our goal to love our enemies like our heavenly father loves his enemies you see love is not just an emotion love is a choice that you make if you don't make that choice you cannot express that love so we have to consciously every day wake up making the choice that I am going to obey the word of God and love my enemies like it is written in scriptures Jesus practiced this kind of love towards his enemies Judas for example betrayed him and he knew that Judas would betray him and he still allowed him to handle the church finances and on the night that Judas was to betray him Judas came and gave him a kiss and he still received the kiss embraced the one that brought those that would arrest him and asked him are you betraying me with a kiss I don't think Judas would ever forget that word those were the last words he heard from Jesus and when the Romans nailed him on the cross in Luke 23 he still prayed for them he said father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing that's love for the enemies in the midst of all the pain he still had time to pray for them David practiced this kind of love towards Saul King Saul King Saul wanted David dead by all means because he knew that David was going to take over from him more than once he threw a spear at him to pin him to the wall and the young man escaped and two times Saul was given into the hands of David as he was pursuing David him and all his soldiers got tired and they laid down somewhere to sleep and David came in there and carried his jar of water caught the skirts of his garment and left the person that came with David said let's kill him now this is our opportunity David said I cannot kill the anointed of the Lord the man is pursuing you now you have opportunity to strike him and you say no he's anointed of the Lord oil was poured on his head many people are not careful to speak against God's anointed they've taken it upon themselves as the judge of God's anointed but David said I dare not touch God's anointed meanwhile God has already told him you are the one to take over and so what else just kill him and take over but David had the love of God the Bible says David was a man after God's heart and God's heart is that of love he loved Saul and will not kill Saul and after he fled away he cried and called his name and when Saul got up he showed him what he had taken from him and David David's heart still smote him that he caught 
the king's garment, he was still not happy that he cut the garment. A second time again, it happened and David entered there again. And one of his captains said, just allow me, I will strike him to the ground once. I will not repeat it twice. David had dangerous men, dangerous warriors. The man said, just once I move my hands once, he's dead. And David said, no, we cannot touch God's anointed. And took his spear instead and went again. When Saul saw what David did, Saul himself began to cry. I said, how can God deliver me to your hand that you won't kill me? And he said, I am guilty, you are innocent. And he made a pledge not to pursue after David again. Even when Saul and Jonathan, his son, finally died, somebody thought that David would be happy and excited that they had died. And he came and lied to David that I, I'm the one that killed Saul. And David said, you did what? You were not afraid to lift up your hand and touch God's anointed. And he told one of the young men to kill him instantly. One would wonder why would a man like David not be excited that his enemy was dead? It was because David had the mind of God. A loving heart that does not rejoice when evil happens to others. You see, without love, we will keep seeing our enemies and people around us with the eyes of past offenses what they did to you will keep coming up to you you keep remembering every time you see them you will remember what they did to you it only takes love overwhelming your heart to make you see them and not bother about what they did to you but rather express what you have towards them Listen, it is what we have that we express. Those who express hate, hatred towards others, it shows that that is what you have inside you. Because you cannot give what you do not have. But the Bible says that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So what I have is love. It doesn't matter what you do to me. I am incapable of hating you. Because I don't have hatred inside of me. So when I see believers who hate people with a passion, hate fellow believers, hate fellow sisters and brothers, I wonder whether the love of God written in scripture has really truly been shed abroad in your heart. Because if it is in your heart, then that is what you will take out and express towards others. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 14, let all things be done with love. 1 Corinthians 14, 16. Let all, 16, 14 rather, 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Let all things be done with love. All things, everything you do in this life. In your relationship with people, let it be coated with the love of God. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2 says, And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling servant. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 2. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 11 says, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after. Mention several things, but one of the key things there is love. Follow after love. Pursue after love. Hallelujah. So, we have a responsibility to deliberately arise and pursue after love. Your human nature will tell you not to practice such love. And that is why you have to deliberately pursue after that love and 
choose to practice that love. It's a matter of choice. It doesn't happen naturally until you have been so overwhelmed and used to it, it becomes part of you. But when you are starting out, you have to resist the flesh and choose to obey the instruction to pursue after love and love even those who hate you and love those who despitefully use you, those who walk against you, those who attack you. Now, I will give us a few practical ways of how to love your enemies because if I say love your enemies, uh, some might just be wondering, so how do I love my enemies? Do I just go knock his door open, whatever they are eating, and say, I'm going to eat with you? Is that how I'm to love my enemies? There are practical ways to love your enemies. Number one way is to forgive them. Forgive your enemies. True love practices forgiveness. First Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 says, towards the latter end of it, says love does not keep records of wrongs. Love does not keep records of wrongs. And so, if you truly love, you are going to forgive the people that have offended you. The King James Version says that love does not think evil, does not meditate upon the evil that has been done towards it. And in order for you not to focus on that evil, meditate on it or keep records of it, you need to forgive. The Bible says, forgive us as our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Scripture says, if you bring your gift before the altar and remember that you have something against somebody leave your gift at the altar go and settle the matter with that person and then come back and give that gift if not you will give that gift and it will be wasted and this is why a lot of people are sacrificing and praying and there is no answer and they go from church to church they think the churches are the problem they think the pastors are not anointed enough but they are the ones carrying the things hindering the prayers from being answered and so when such person finally hears the truth and forgives and settles the wrongs you will see the blessings flowing in so easily and the person begins to wonder where these blessings have been all these why so the number one thing is to forgive your enemies humanly speaking it might be tough and difficult to forgive those who have offended you many times when the Lord tells me to tell people to forgive those who have offended them one of the best responses they give to me is pastor you don't understand you don't understand and the truth is that I don't understand but there is something I understand it is the Word of God I understand the Word of God and I understand the grace of God that is able to allow us to forgive our enemies and let go of those who have hurt us every true forgiveness is for the good of the person forgiving because unforgiveness hinders your prayers like the gentleman that had to leave the gift and go settle the quarrel before coming to give it and pray if he had prayed before settling the matter he would have wasted his time so unforgiveness prevents your prayers from being answered unforgiveness opens up room for torment demonic attacks in your life any area of your life at all so forgiving your enemy 
is a practical way of loving your enemies and then number two number two way of loving your enemies is to pray for them Matthew chapter 5 from verse 43 Matthew chapter 5 from verse 43 and just in case you are in church and you are saying why did I come to church today well let me tell you why you came to church you came because God wants you to forgive that your enemy hallelujah Matthew chapter 5 verse 43 you have heard that it had been said thou shall love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy but I say unto you love your enemies bless them that curse you do good to them that hate you and pray you see it there pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you so the number two practical way to love your enemies is to pray for them and you cannot pray for somebody that you have not forgiven it's until after you forgive you can pray for the person and say God bless him make way for him God touch his life let him come to the knowledge of the truth let him come to know you hallelujah it is wrong to wish for anybody to go to hellfire you don't know what hell is you don't know what the lake of fire is so don't ever wish that even your baddest enemy will go to the lake of fire the heart of your father is that all men should come to repentance and if you are a true son of your father you will want all men to come to repentance there are those who will not come but it shouldn't be your desire for them not to come it should be your desire for every one of them to come to repentance so the bible says pray for your enemies number three way to express love towards your enemy is to do good to them the Bible says here in verse 44 of the same chapter Matthew chapter 5 he says but I say unto you love your enemies bless them that curse you do good to them that hate you hallelujah you see it there do good to them that hate you as much as it is possible for you reach out to your enemies and do good to them as the opportunity comes for you to do good don't repay them with evil rather do good to them and there have been times when people do good to their enemies and it breaks the enemies down and they are like you mean upon all I've been doing to this man he's still the one that recommended me for me to get this appointment and that changes their impression about you and they begin to love you instead of hating you you see if you truly pray for your enemies and do good to them God can make them to be at peace with you Proverbs chapter 16 verse 7 when a man's ways please the Lord he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him hallelujah You might not love these enemies to the extent of going to visit them in their house going to sit down to eat with them and say all my enemies after service now I'm going straight to their house all of them 
I'll be eating and sleeping in their house now. You might not necessarily need to that. But then you begin to have love feelings toward them. You pray for them. When opportunity arises, you do good to them. They, you have a change of mind about them. You understand? That begins to provoke a proper action based on scriptures towards those whom you have been hating or acting negatively towards. The feelings of love are exemplified in 1 Corinthians 13 where I mentioned earlier on. From verse 4. He says love is patient. Love is patient with people. Love is kind with people. Love does not envy, does not boast. Love is not proud. It does not dishonor others. Love is not self-seeking. Love is not easily angered. Love does not keep records of wrongs. And so if you are going to love your enemies, it means you will be patient with your enemies. You will be kind to them. You will not envy them. You will not dishonor them. You will not be angry with them. And you will not keep records of all the wrongs that they have done to you. How many of you here have enemies? Let me be sure. It's like some people don't have enemies. Can I see your hand if you have enemies? Ah, I have a lot of them. Some don't have angel. What is your neighbor's name? Even angels have enemies. <laughs> the demons are enemies of angels. But the Bible says you should not keep records of the wrongs that your enemies do towards you. Enemies, by definition, are generally, generally people who know you but do not love you and hate you instead. You know, there are people who do not know you, they don't hate you, and they don't love you. They just know you. They pass. They don't love you. They don't hate you. Those are not your enemies. Those are your neighbors. The difference between your neighbors and your enemies is this. Your neighbors know you. They don't necessarily love you. And they don't hate you. They just pass. Once in a while, they greet. If they don't greet, there is no problem. Because they don't really have any affinity with you. Those are neighbors. But enemies, they know you. They don't love you. And they hate you. Those are the ones that I'm saying you should love. Praise the name of the Lord. You know they hate you. They have been doing things against you. Yet, the Bible says, love them. And there can be several reasons why enemies hate you. It can be that you have something that they don't have. You have a house. You have a car. You have gotten married. Or you are just beautiful. Check whether your neighbor is beautiful. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know there are some people, even if they wear the cheapest clothes in this world, they are still beautiful. We don't know how they do it. Anything they wear, they still come out looking so beautiful. And so, somebody can hate you and despise you and fight against you because you are beautiful. Some can hate you because they think you are showing off. But you are just being yourself. They say every day, he must change clothes. He must wear to match from up down. You know there are people who, if they are not matched, they won't come out of the house. The headgear is especially the sisters. The brothers can wear yellow, blue, green, and purple. The yellow shirt, blue tie, green belt, purple trouser, and black shoe. And the spirit will still move. <laughs> but the sisters, God made them special. Everything must match from top to bottom. Glory be to God. And so after the matching inside, as she matches outside, they say, Siam. 
And so they hate you because you dress well. Some hate you because they just suspect you for no reason. Some just have inferiority complex. And so when you appear and it all looks good, you're always happy, you're always smiling. They feel inferior, they feel insecure about you. There can be so many reasons why people hate you. Some of them are incapable of loving. They grew up in environments of hatred. Their parents trained them to hate their neighbors. I hope you know there are families like that. The children are trained. They hear the father and the mother. They are always talking about this person and that person. And so the child is always watching and watching. And so when it comes out, he too begins to hate this person and that person. Be careful what you say about your neighbors in the presence of your children. Because that is what they will do towards your neighbors too. That is what they will think of them and say of them. There are talks that are not meant to be talked in the presence of children. If you raise matters while going with me in the car and the children are in the car, I will tell you later. Let's talk later. Because it's not, you think the children are not hearing. As they are playing, they are hearing it. Their, their memory is sharper than your own. So many of these enemies, they are incapable of hating, perhaps because of how they grew up. Their life experiences, negative things that have happened to them. They don't have the love of God that you have. So you can't blame them for not loving. And you shouldn't punish them by hating them. You should love them so they can have a taste of what you have. Which they don't have. And possibly change. And begin to love like you love also by experiencing your God. Your loving your enemies can make a great difference in their lives. Regardless what they do to you. Regardless what they have done or what they are doing to you. You love them because you are a lover. Hallelujah. You love them because that's what you are capable of doing. You are capable of loving. The love of God according to Romans 5.5 5, has been shared abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. You cannot do otherwise. Like I have said before, humanly speaking, it is extremely difficult to love your enemies. But we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. Proverbs chapter 25 from verse 21 says, Proverbs 25 from verse 21, if your enemy is hungry, Give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head, and the Lord shall reward thee. You see that? If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If you have water to give him, give him. Coals of fire upon his head does not mean coals of fire literally. It means the head there refers to the mind. His mind will begin to trouble him about you. That this man that I've done these things again, is still loving me and caring for me and giving to me. There must be something about this man. That's the cause of fire. You are heaping, you are touching his mind. You are touching her mind. And very soon, he's going to change his approach towards you. The love of God is the greatest. Of all the virtues in scriptures, faith, power, and every other virtue in scripture, the love of God. Love is the greatest of all of them. Colossians chapter 3 verse 14. And above all these virtues, put on love, which binds up in perfect unity. So the Bible is saying here in Colossians 3.14 That's above every other virtue I know brethren who all they seek after is the power of God Fresh oil, fresh anointing, fresh grace But the Bible says above them all Put on love Because love is what binds up every other virtue In perfect unity Without love 
power will not work without love faith will not work the bible says faith which worketh by love i will close this service today by praying a prayer for you and the prayer is found in philippians chapter 1 verse 9 philippians chapter 1 verse 9 and this i pray that your love O oh lord the love of your people O oh lord may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment i pray for you that this love that the father has put inside of you you will begin to express it more and more you will begin to have more understanding and knowledge of this love so that you can put it to work and begin to love the Lord your God with all your heart and love yourself as God wants you to and love your fellow believers and love your neighbors as yourself and also love your enemies even as your heavenly father loves his enemies and i pray that as you practice this you will receive the reward of loving your enemies you will receive the reward of loving the lord your god you will receive the reward of loving yourself loving your neighbors and loving the brethren Father, I thank you for this grace. Lift up your hands and bless the name of the Lord. If you are under the sound of my voice and you are not born again, I want you to know that God loves you even though you are an enemy of God. He loves you so much, he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross of Calvary for you. And if you will believe in him, you will be saved. If you are willing to believe in him, I want you to say this prayer with me. Dear Father in heaven, I believe with my heart that your son Jesus died on the cross of Calvary to save me from my sins. And I confess with my mouth that you raised him from the dead. And I receive Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, my Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Lord, I thank you for saving your children. And I release grace in the name of Jesus Christ for us to practice your love all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you have been blessed by this ministration, follow Apostle John Udo on Facebook at Apostle John Udo. To follow on YouTube, type John Udo Ministries. If you need prayer, counseling, deliverance, or follow up, call plus 234. 806-036-1421-234-806-036-1421. And remember, all things are possible.